you guys probably think you played a good game. Oh, good. It was perfect. Right, Steve? Good! Hold it. Steve, in the first place, you weren't concentrating. Your mind was on that little blonde with a Mickey Mouse T-shirt. <laughs> I hardly noticed her. And it was Snoopy. <laughs> we'll take care of Snoopy later. Stop playing to the fans. Watch me, watch the catcher, and watch that header. Right. And Steve, before I forget it, one more thing. Yes, sir? That was a great no-hitter. <laughs> about baseball. I thought we were talking about steak. How's that uh, schoolboy pitcher of yours coming along? Congratulations, Bobby. What? You managed to get through almost a whole lunch before you brought him up. Steve Leversee is just fine. That's great. Guess we're going to draft him. Sensational. Did you tell him yet? No. I wanted to test the ground out first. Now, what's the college action on him? Oh, it's excellent. It's just excellent. He's been offered three athletic scholarships, all good ones. Now, how good is good? You know, I think in dollars. I'm hip. All right, major universities, uh, four years, complete scholarships. Uh, what's that, 20,000 apiece? Good enough. Which means you're going to have to come up with some real money if you want. Now, I've only seen the kid pitch twice. Now, come on, Luke. Is the kid that great? He's going to be. Oh, he's got a big league fastball already. It sails, it tails up and into a right-handed batter. It's got real heat. I've been working on the curveball. That's going to be just fine. Most important, Bobby, he's, he's a thinker out there. The kid thinks, he works. He's a pitcher, not a thrower. Control? It's coming. Luke, will you help me sign him up? Bobby, I'll help Steve any way I can. Yeah, sure, but will you help me? This steak is great. Yeah? Why am I starting to lose my appetite? I wish I could have seen it, Stephen. Mm-hmm. Next year, I'm going to play baseball, and Steve will have to do the dishes. Maybe Mr. Pritchard will let me have the afternoon off for the next game. I can make the work up on Sunday. I'll get it, Stephen. You've had enough exercise for today. Mrs. Leversey? Yes? Hi. I'm Bobby Coble. Oh. Well, come in. Thank you. Please. Steve? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hi, Steve. Oh, excuse me, I feel like I know you after seeing a few of your games and listening to Luke Tanner talk about it. <laughs> well, how do you do, Mr. Cobble? I feel like I know you, too. You ever see me play? No. But when I was 10 years old, I had your picture on 14 bubblegum cards. <laughs> you should have saved them. They would have been collector's items. Junk nostalgia. <laughs> Could I get you some coffee or tea? Ah, no. No, thank you. Nothing. I won't stay long. Actually, I just came over to see if I could get Steve's autograph. Steve? Hmm? I think that's a joke, Mom. No, no joke. I would like your signature on a contract. You were one of our top draft choices. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> you mean that? Actually, what I'm talking about is that I'd like to work out an official agreement where we could sign you. Now, I know you've had a lot of good college offers, but we can make it worth your while to come right to work for us. Well, what exactly does that mean? We'll pay him a cash bonus, plus we'll work out an attractive salary agreement. You mean a cash bonus above the salary? Mm-hmm. Uh, we realize these days that every family could use a little extra cash. Well, yes, we all can use a little extra money. <laughs> how much? Well, how does this sound? Winter and her summer coat knows it's summer. 
That's a good question. Uh, why don't we ask Bridget's doctor when we take her in? Bridget doesn't look sick. Well, she's not sick. It's just time for a checkup and some booster shot. Hello? This is Artis Laversey, Stephen's mother. Hi, I'm glad you called. I've been trying to reach Steve. Oh, we just had the most exciting thing happen, and I, I wanted to thank you for everything you've done to make it possible. What have I done? Mr. Cobble was just here. You sure didn't waste any time. Well, he made Stephen a very generous offer, and we've had some problems, but <laughs> this solves them all. I'm glad to hear that. Is Steve happy about it? Oh, we're all happy. And his dad would have been so proud of him. Well, I know you had a lot to do with it. And I am grateful, and I just wanted to tell you that. No, Steve did it all himself. But I do appreciate the call. And thank you again. You're welcome. Good night. How about that, Glennon? What was that all about? An historic occasion. A call from a happy parent. Well, Bridget, are you just going to lie there all by yourself when you could be rushed? Huh? Huh? Good morning, Mr. Tanner. Good morning, Cindy. Hey, I'm not going to congratulate you on Saturday's game because I guess everybody bored you to death with it already. Well, actually, you're the first person to mention it. Oh, I blew it. Just when I wanted to get on your good side. Okay, Cindy. What's your problem? Next Saturday's bike ride for ecology. I'm chairperson. Chairwoman. That's sexist. No, that's gender. See, if I were in charge, I'd be the chairman. If we don't know who's in charge, that would be the chairperson. Got it? Well, that's not the way Gloria Steinem sees it. Where does she teach? <laughs> About the bike ride. It's Saturday. I've got my tickets. I'm planning to go. Oh, I was hoping you weren't planning to go. Well, I thought you were chairperson. Well, I am, but my bike's broken. I was hoping I could borrow yours. That's a deal. Oh, thanks, Mr. Tanner. My mother to drive me along in the car, but that would be a mortifying way to fight pollution. Yeah, I see what you mean. L listen, I'll ride my bike to school on Friday morning, and you can keep it all weekend, all right? Oh, thanks, Mr. Tanner. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. I don't know whether you're the first or the second. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean Steve Levesey. He's in the paper already? Don't you read the sports section? Never till after the comics. What's it say? The offer made to Truman High's bonus baby is rumored to be in the $50,000 class. True? Well, I knew there was an offer. I didn't know what the amount was. Are you pleased? You should be. Certainly I'm pleased. I'm pleased for Steve and his mother. She's a widow. She can use the money. I mean pleased for yourself. This is a tremendous boost for you. I didn't know I needed one. Not for me. There are people who like to see results. Some of them suspect that your coaching may be as unorthodox as your teaching methods. Has there been much dialogue on that point? Ever since I was rash enough to hire you for the English department and make you athletic director, you'd be astonished how many people think those two jobs are diametrically opposed. Wait a minute. So to prove myself as a coach, all I have to do is send my star pitcher to the big leagues with a fat bonus contract? Certainly won't hurt. Well, what do I do to prove myself as an English teacher? Uh, tr uh, try to find a, a, a publisher for Sidney Damon's first novel? Heaven forbid. Margaret, I'm not going to try to cash in on Steve's success. If he's happy, I'm happy. That's all there is to it. Hey, congratulations, Steve. How about a radio interview this afternoon? Uh, hey, Steve, you going to take me along to the majors? <laughs> yeah, so you can feel penis in the left field bleed. Coach? Oh, Jake. Steve. Congratulations. Super. Can I talk to you for a minute, Coach? It's kind of important. Sure. See you later. Yeah, see, see you later. Take care, Steve. What's up? You heard about the contract my mom calls you? Right. She was way up. She called everybody out of town even. Well, she's happy. Yeah. That's the trouble. Why trouble? I know we need the money. Things have been rough. It's like a wish come true, you know? Only it's my mother's wish. I don't know if I want to play baseball. So what am I going to do? Steve, I'm going down to work out with the Cardinals this afternoon. Want to go along, meet some of the guys? Oh, great. Steven. I thought it might help answer a few questions. Okay. Good.
see you later. All right. Bye-bye, Mom. Bye. See a locker room with wall to wall carpet before? No. Hey, Nick. Hey, Luke. Good seeing you. <laughs> Did I rip you on batting practice? I was trying to set you up for Brian. <laughs> Nick Stozik, Steve Leversey. He's one of my pitchers at Truman. Hey, oh, yeah, you? the no hit kid. I was reading about you in the papers. You really smoked them. Yeah, thanks a lot. You gonna sign soon? Well, uh. You've been that route. He's been drafted. Now he's got to make up his mind whether he wants to sign or not. Well, don't rush into anything. You got any problems, I'd be glad to help you out however I can. Well, for one thing, uh, I wanted to go to college. Could I still sign a big league contract? No reason why not. I know lots of ball players go to school in the off season. No kidding. Listen, there's no reason to neglect your education just because you're going to be rich and famous. Go to school in the wintertime. Steve, do you think you can handle both college and pro ball at the same time? Sure. You did, didn't you? <coughs> Yeah, but it's tough. It's worth thinking about. Thanks, Nick. Right. Steve. Ted Jelarney! Hey! Big hey, Luke, what's say? Good seeing you. Yeah. How you been? Good. Ah, uh, Steve Leversee, Ted Jelarney. Pleased to meet you. How are you? He's uh, just been drafted. He might be pitching against you next season. Oh, yeah? Ted, you used to talk about going to college. What happened? Well, I tried it my first season, but I had to quit. Why? Well, I was dividing my interests, and it hurt my game. Really threw it off. You gotta stay with it, especially a pitcher. What's that word, Luke? Concentrate. Hey, beautiful. Oh, yeah, there's another thing. You want to use that off-season to cash in on your publicity. You know, you do your commercials and your paid appearances. You do it just right, and you can maybe double your income. You let me know when you're ready, Steve. I'll introduce you to my agent. Thanks. Ted, are you thinking about going back to school after you finish playing ball? Well, that was the original plan, but... Hey, Luke, another two years, I'm fixed for life. Who needs it? Thanks a lot. See you yeah. later. Come on, Steve. But all these ball players have been through the same thing. They've been through drafts, they've been through negotiations, they Hey, Mr. Cobble. <laughs> oh, Bobby, what are you doing in Cardinal territory? The question is, what are you doing? Can I uh, talk to you? Sure. Hey, I'll see you. See you in a minute. Did you uh, know we were here? Yeah. I called to talk to Steve, and his mama said you uh, brought him to the stadium to talk to the ball players. You didn't uh, happen to talk about money. Hey, Bobby. Well, I want to know what's coming off. Now, all of a sudden, there's a whole lot of foot dragging going around, and the next thing I know, you're taking him to the stadium to talk to the players. What are you, his agent? Are you finished? No. But if you want to explain, I'll listen. Hey, you got a suspicious mind. Money isn't the problem, Bob. The boy's confused. That's why he's dragging his feet, and I'm just trying to help him find some answers. Well, that's my job. Let me nurse the kid through. I'm still his coach. Not for long. I'm going to give that boy a diploma that he can cash at the bank unless you turn him around. And don't do it, Luke. Don't mess it up. Do you remember what I told you at lunch the other day? Yeah. You said you'd help the boy. Still goes. OK. OK. pretty hard to tell with Bridget. Uh, what do you think? I don't think so. She doesn't look scared. You get scared when you go to the doctor? Well, I guess it's easier if you like balloons. What? Oh, well, doctors always give balloons. First they give you a shot, then they give you a balloon. Yeah, you shouldn't be scared when you go to the doctor. He's only trying to help you. Then why do they try to bribe you with balloons? Uh, Bridget is next. Oh, yes, this is she. Come on, Bridget. Come on. Come on, kid. 
And I'm Lucas Tanner. I call for an appointment with Dr. Brunner. Is he here? No, he isn't. I'm Dr. Brunner. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry that you're Dr. Brunner. You're sorry that you have preconceived notions about veterinarians, right? Not only veterinarians, about all doctors. I think all doctors are going to be men. You think I'll ever get over that? Oh, well, that depends. What other symptoms do you have? <laughs> Why don't you bring Bridget into the examining room? Come on, kid. Come on, my Bridget. Uh, she only needs a booster on her distemper shot. I mean, you know, along with thorough examination and anything else you'd care to recommend. She's beautiful. Hey, Glennon, you want to go in and watch? No, thanks. I hate pain. Oh, Bridget won't feel a thing. I know, but if I watched, I would. Afros and Wally. Uh, success comes to him who waits. Contradiction? Terry. Um, a rolling stone gathers no moss? Not bad, but there's a better one. Um, Cindy. He who hesitates is lost. Good. Aphorism. Uh, JT. Uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Contradiction, Wally. It's never too late to learn. Except after the bell. All right, for tomorrow, make up a proverb. On what? On any subject. Just make it short. Oh, and keep it clean. Right. Mr. Tanner? Hi. Come on in. I waited until class was over. Thank you. Are you busy? I don't want to... No, I'm not doing a thing. Come on in. I just wanted to talk to you about Stephen. He's in such a strange mood lately. I hardly know him. Well, he's undecided about something that's important to him. That's a big strain. But why? I mean, it's everything his dad wanted for him. It's what I want. And he's going to have all of that and more. Well, that's what you want for him, and what your husband wanted for him. But what about Steve? What's he want for himself? That's what I don't understand. I mean, he, he's not even out of high school yet, and he's a big success. I mean, it's incredible. The money. Well, the athletic scholarships, he could have had his pick, thanks to you. And then the contract offers from Mr. Corbell. Oh, something else. This came this morning. The McDowell Scholarship. Terrific. $3,000 from a college I never heard of. And that's for his studies. I mean, he's got a brain. Well, I bet he's excited about it. It's an honor. I found this lying on the kitchen table. He opened it. He looked at it. He didn't even bother to show it to me. Did you talk to him about it? Talk? I'm just his mother. He doesn't talk to me. <laughs> Have a better conversation with his desk. He listens to you. And that's okay. And you're his teacher and his coach. And he should listen. But please give him the right advice. What is the right advice? <sighs> Stop walking around in a daze and sign that contract before they change their mind. <laughs> Mrs. Leversey, I think that's a decision Steve has to make for himself. But what if he decides wrong? And ruins his whole life. I mean, what if this is his one big opportunity and he lets it go? And, I mean, nothing ever works right for him the rest of his life. What if a tidal wave rolls over Missouri? Well, can you ask a boy to decide a man's future? Nobody's asking him. He just has to do it. Well, then don't get in his way. If you can't help, then don't interfere. Please. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Yeah! Put it in there. Somebody offers me 50,000, they won't have to wait two seconds for an answer. Don't talk. Catch. Hey, Steve, if you don't grab it, you're out of your head. I mean, just think of the trips. The best hotels. 
The girl's hiding under your bed. Hey, man, what's your problem? You cut the corner. Yeah, the corner of Gore and Lockwood. All right, save it, Steve. Yeah, for the majors. Steve, you're gonna bug me too? No, oh, I'm not gonna bug you, but I'd like that ball if you're not gonna use it. Yeah. Come on, pick me up. All right, let me have a bat. Come on, you guys, little infield, let's go. All right, third base, we ready? Round once, one, one, one. All right, good stop. Go. Oh, come on, here we go. Gotta move, gotta move. Fired in it. Yeah, oh, yeah, got yeah. it. Here you go, Bill, another one. All right, get the glove down to the ground. Come up to it, come up to it. You can't stab at it. It's trouble. Hey, Steve. Hey, what happened? Hey, you take out your phone, you're supposed to call me. I haven't had a chance. No harm done. All right, bye. Hey, big fella. You're looking good. Reminds me of my daughter's Sandlot team. Hey, I thought you were all finished scouting Truman for this year. Oh, I thought I'd come down and ask Steve if he wanted to go for a ride. Where? Your lawyer's office. Figure we may as well uh, settle down and sign the preliminary papers. What's that? Kind of like getting engaged. It keeps things smooth until the contract is signed. Luke will tell you, he signed the same kind of papers before he went to the majors. You remember that far back, Luke? Just barely. <laughs> Do I have to do it right now? Well, I'm going out of town, and your mother thought it would be a big load off your mind if we got something down on paper. Uh, I don't feel I'm... I'm ready yet. Why not? I'm not sure. About what? Anything. Well, I think it's time you got sure. Don't you, Luke? What's your hurry, Bobby? Well, I told you, I'm going out of town. I want to get this settled. Oh, Steve, change clothes. Hey, uh, wait. Hey, 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 look, uh... I'm not trying to kidnap you. I want to hand you $50,000. Is that all right with you? Oh, really? I just get the feeling I'm being hustled. I don't like it. Hustled? Rushed, uh, pushed into something. You know what I mean? You know what he's talking about, Luke? Yeah. He's being honest about his feeling. Oh, now, this is getting to be one great big pain. Wait a minute, Bobby. Now, we got a deal, Steve. Hey, Luke. If you're thinking of letting this kid pass this time in hopes of getting a better deal in the next draft, you just forget it. You're out of line, Bobby. Oh, pardon me, but I don't understand. Now, Steve, I want to ask you one more time. Are you going with me to your lawyer's office? Hey, in case you hadn't noticed, we're in the middle of practice, and my pitcher has to get ready for his next ball game. It does, does he? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're playing the Martin Van Buren Eagles, and that's about as rough as it gets. Flounder or a cheese enchilada? I'm not too good at making decisions. Can you pick a number between one and four? Three. Flounder. You lose. Are you sure you can stick around for this big feast? Sure. My mom's working late. My sister's at a girlfriend's. You know, all the guys think I, I have steak every night because of that crummy contract. How does it feel to be rich? Please, not even as a joke. I get it from everybody. It's like the check at the supermarket. He looks at me and I can almost hear him thinking. I work my tail off and look at that dummy. He really lucked out. Envy. Pure envy. It kills me. I mean, if I deserved it. If I were a doctor working for a cure for, for acne, anything. What can I do that's worth $50,000? Throw a ball over home plate? Big deal. Well, if you do it well enough for long enough, a lot of people are going to pay good money to see you do it. So I'll ask for a raise. I'm listening. I love baseball. It's a great game. That's what makes it so hard. All that money for doing something I love. But do I want to do it for a living? What would you rather do? I wish I had an answer. I'd be a doctor, lawyer, architect. Truth is, I don't know. Well, you could always teach. I thought about that. 
Do you feel you're compromising yourself by signing the contract? Yeah. I'm trading an uncertain future for instant success. Big compromise. Well, you interested in success? Not the way my mother is. But maybe I owe her that much. You know? Steve, I think maybe I've been neglecting part of your education. How do you mean? No, I promised you the whole picture. There's a friend of mine I'm going to call. I want you to meet him. Keep an eye on this, the stove to see if there's any smoke coming out. What do I do if I see any? Open a window. Buddy Moore. Hey, Hi, Steve. How are you? Hey, Luke told me all about you on the phone. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Hey, why don't we get a booth? Yeah, let's sit down. Looking good, big guy. What do you want? Uh, beer? Soda? Connie? Take care of my pals. How's the coffee? Fantastic. Just made a fresh pot. So, Steve? I'll have the same. Honey, uh, I'd like another one of these. <laughs> I feel like I just pitched nine innings in a dust storm. Uh, listen, I thought we ought to meet here, because that uh, motel room's a joke. I hope you don't mind. Oh, come on, it's fine. Well, how's it going? Great. Won seven games. Good. Lost eight. Hmm. <laughs> now, uh, we're pushing for third place. It's not too bad. Hey, Steve, he tells me that Bobby Cobble's trying to recruit you. That's right. All I have to say is enjoy it. That was the best time when uh, Bobby was trying to recruit me. He made me feel like... Uh, a uh, cross between Hank Aaron and Dizzy Dean and, and Superman. <laughs> you got a couple of no-hitters, huh? Two. And the season's not even over yet. One more, he's going to match your record. You had three no-hitters? Yeah, high school. Yeah, I had scouts coming at me from all directions, but... Uh, Bobby's the one who wrapped me up for the majors. How long were you in the majors? <laughs> Almost a whole season. Well, they were looking for a good curveball, and uh, mine wasn't that good. And when I was working on it, they brought up this uh, kid from the coast who could throw around corners. It was aced out. Thanks. Hot. Hot, hot. Ah, Connie saw me pitch yesterday. One of the few. How did I look? Beautiful. But you lost. <laughs> Story of my life. Steve, questions? Uh, I still can't see why they dropped you to the minors. They can always use good pitching. When the bases are loaded and you're facing their cleanup man, it doesn't help to show them your scrapbook. Up, down, you gotta learn to bounce. Buddy, have you heard anything from Joan? Yeah. Uh, she's in Minneapolis with her sister. I'm here, Luke. And you want to know something? I can't remember who we're playing tomorrow. Or where. You know, I think maybe I'll call her and tell her I bumped into you. Give her my best. Why? I never gave her mine. But then she didn't stick around for the worst either. <sighs> Steve, you take a good look. I'm the uh, horrible example. That's why you called, right, Luke? Oh, come on, buddy. Ah, it's okay. 
Listen, tomorrow, I think I'll pitch a no-hitter. I feel like it. Why not? Why not? Good luck. What do you mean, a few years? Well, Buddy didn't have anything to fall back on. What happens if he's dropped out of the Bush Leagues? Twelve years of pro ball playing experience goes with him. Are you going to drink then? Let's get out of here. Come in. Hold it, get the light. I don't usually make house calls. Sure, it's an emergency. Oh, absolutely. Look, look at this. Poor Bridget. Look at the the, the hey, well, Oh, the paw. Look at the paw, though. Look at that tail. It's, it's just wagging like crazy. And I feel his nose. It's cold. It's wet. Yuck. You know perfectly well the dogs always wag their tails. And their noses are supposed to be wet and cold. You're kidding. Oh, uh, doctor, in, in that case, I'm I'm sorry. I've I've got you down here for nothing. Unless, of course, you'd like something wet and cold in a glass. I'd love it. Oh, well, how did you happen to be driving by my office so late? I was taking one of the students home. From school? No, from a saloon. A little field trip. He was making a special study. Of what? Yeah, life. Oh, I can see I'm going to have to check you out, Lucas Tanner. For what? To see if you're qualified to teach that subject. No, it's on the opposite page. Mr. Tanner. Hi, Cindy. I suppose you're wondering why I haven't brought your bike back. Uh, actually, I've forgotten all about it. Well, things on your mind? Oh, one or two. Uh, how'd the ecology bike ride go? Uh, well, somewhere along the way, I managed to pollute the environment with a few broken spokes. Oh, but don't worry, I'll have it fixed. Okay. You're not mad? Being mad isn't going to get my spokes fixed. Oh, thanks, Mr. Tanner. Then maybe I could borrow your bike for the next ecology ride? Not a chance. But I'll have it fixed. I'll talk to you later, Cindy. Lucas, is this true? To a degree, yes. Of course it's true. He took Stephen to a bar. To meet somebody. To a bar. Yes, a saloon, a, a beer joint. I'll bet you anything that Steve has seen people drink beer before. You see Mrs. Blumenthal, his baseball coach, his teacher? He took Stephen to a bar. I see that much, at least. Why don't you ask us what we had to drink? Bourbon? Scotch? Gin? Really? Coffee. We had coffee. If Steve's too young for coffee, then I apologize. That's not the point. I know your point. I just don't like the way you're trying to make it. Stay out of Stephen's life. Uh, please, Mrs. Leversey. No. Now, he was ready to sign that contract and collect his money until you interfered. And now you have got him so confused he doesn't even know his own mind. I don't understand that. Now, why would a baseball coach keep a boy from signing a big league contract? Ask Mr. Corbell. He can tell you. Well, obviously he told you. Why don't you tell us? You were bitter because your own baseball career was cut short by an injury. And that has colored your entire attitude about Stephen's big chance. Now, that's true, isn't it, Mr. Tanner? Mm. You admit it. I guess I shouldn't have told her about last night. She was a um, little concerned, yeah. She wanted to know why I hadn't signed yet. Right now, she thinks it's my fault. She'd cry and yell and talk about my dad. You know, my sister won't go to college. You know, everything will be ruined if I don't sign. 
No. Well, then you didn't get the whole number. Steve, I took you down to see Bud Moore because I thought it might round things out for you. But now I think maybe I'd better go back over some things that happened to me. Because my stay in the big leagues was even shorter than Bud's. I was a rookie pitcher. I had everything going for me. And I wrecked my elbow. I mean, man, I didn't even go to the minor leagues. I was out of baseball. It was all over. Doesn't seem fair. Ah, that's exactly what I thought at first. I mean, why should it happen to me? Why should this, this thing that I wanted so much be just grabbed away from me? I was bitter. But that didn't last long because I'd met great people, had good times, won some ball games. And I knew I was going to have to move on to something else. And I did. Steve, I think what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't have to be with you the way it was with Bud Moore. Oh, sure, you'd lose some ball games. But you'd be able to pick yourself up, brush yourself off. So what you're saying is, I shouldn't be afraid to fail. Absolutely. Steve, I was happy playing baseball. I was probably the happiest ball player that ever walked out in that field. If I forgot to tell you that, I'm sorry. Thanks, Coach, for seeing me through this. You've been a big help. Good. Hey, what's with all the gear? Why are you clearing your locker out? Well, I finally had to make a decision. So? So, my first decision was to quit the team. What? Mr. Tanner, that's what Dr. Frankenstein must have looked like when his monster turned on him. Steve, why? With this thing hanging over me, it's no good. My pitching's way off. Steve, we haven't played Oakwood or Riverdale or Wolf Creek? Oh, come on, you can make a better decision than this. I thought that if I... Sit down, Steve. You and I are going to have another little talk. Uh-huh, kid, right down the pipe, Stevie boy. Nice, bring it down, Stevie, bring Keep it down. Keep the ball down, Steve, down. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you, Terry. See ya. I thought Steve had quit the team. He did. How did you change his mind? I threatened to flunk him in English. You didn't. You must be a riot in the classroom. No, actually, all I had to do was remind him of his commitment to the team and cry a lot. I'm going to cry a little myself. We don't do something about the attendance at these games. It's appalling. Well, if we win the county championship, we might be able to jack it up 50%. Oh, good. Then we'd have 30 people watching. Uh, make it 32. If you need me, holler. Thanks a lot. Mrs. Leversee, Bobby. Heard there was a ball game going on around here. Thought I'd come in and uh, have a look at the pitcher. Has Stephen told you what he intends to do? He certainly hasn't told me. Right now, I think he intends to do some pitching. Why don't you talk to him later? Well, I can't wait that long. Steven! Hi, Mom. Mr. Cobble? You tell him, Mr. Cobble. Steve, your mother thinks that uh, we should decide it right here and now. But I'd kind of like to watch the ball game myself. You've had long enough to think about. You're right, Mom. But if you're not thinking straight, it doesn't matter how much time you take. Mr. Tanner has helped me a lot. He hasn't told me how or what to think. He just opened it up for me. I've made up my own mind. I'm turning down Mr. Cobble's off. Don't you want the $50,000? Sure I do. For you and Sally, would be great. Yeah, sure. To be playing big league baseball would be great, too. That's what's so hard. I want to play ball, but I don't want to have to play ball. I'm sorry, Mr. Cobble. So am I. But I don't understand. I mean, if you go to college, you're going to have to play baseball, but without the bonus. He asked me to reply to the athletic scholarship offers. He turned them down. 
All of them? Okay, Mom, I'm still going to college. How? McDowell Scholarship. He applied for that long before all those other offers started coming in. McDowell? Isn't he a picture for the Yankees? Worse, he was a history teacher. It pays so little. Not even room and board. I'll work. A lot of guys work and get by. Does it mean that much to you? Yes. I don't know where I'm going yet. But I've got to make my own choices until I get there. Play ball! Show them how, Steve. Gets to that school and feels like playing baseball. He'll go out for the team. Just like that? No bonuses, no cash inducements, no fringe benefits? No strings. Never ran into a kid like that before. Well, brace yourself, Bobby. There's a lot of them coming up. Sorry you lost one. <laughs> Does it look like I'm hurting? Just wish I hadn't come on so strong with him. Probably thinks I tried to twist his arm. Well, that's not my line of business. Well, nobody has to play baseball. I'll tell him. Hey, you tell him Bobby Caldwell wishes him all the luck in the world, and if he does happen to play for some college team, I'll be around. See you later, Luke. See you next spring. See you, Bobby. Why? Right. Wasn't his world. <laughs> 